How's it going guys? We have an easy question for pharmacology slash GI for step one. Uh, this is not going to be a lengthy clip. A uh, nearly identical question shows up on one of the retired step one forms. So before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. You find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical and mehl and man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. And now start the clip. 69 year old woman. She has a three week history of epigastric pain during meals. She's been taking a high dose naproxen for the past six weeks to treat her osteoarthritis. Question wants to know the most appropriate pharmacologic treatment for this patient. So clearly these are gastric ulcers that are NSAID induced. Okay. Uh, patients will often, and this shows up on family medicine forms for 2CK, uh, high yield, patients will often uh, self-medicate with NSAIDs. Uh, even though osteoarthritis, we want to use acetaminophen first line because it's non-inflammatory OA. So NSAIDs are not going to do any better job than acetaminophen. NSAIDs kill the kidneys and they can cause gastric ulcers as in this patient. Okay, so this question is asking, how do we treat gastric ulcers that are NSAID induced? Let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, bismuth, wrong fucking answer. I've never seen this as an actual correct answer on US Similia. Okay, I mean, you, you hear about this a lot in resources, the notion that this could be incorporated into H. pylori uh, regimens. It's not even first line, okay? Uh, but as I just fucking said, I've never seen this actually assessed. Wrong answer. Choice B, somatidine, and wrong answer. This is high yield for being an H2 receptor antagonist, you need to know that this inhibits P450 and that this causes gynecomastia, okay? Super high yield, causes gynecomastia. I've had students come out of the step one telling me that they got that detail, all right? Wrong fucking answer. Should I see dinoprostone, wrong answer? This is a prostaglandin E2 analog that's used topically for ripening of the cervix uh, in women who are in parturition. Okay, so I mean, this is more 2CK OBS gyn uh, related farm, but point is, it's the wrong fucking answer. Choice D, asomeprazole, proton pump inhibitor, wrong answer. Uh, obviously, myriad of uses. Uh, a two week trial of PPIs is how we diagnose GERD. Okay, uh, proton pump inhibitors are more efficacious than H2 receptor antagonists because PPIs are irreversible and non competitive whereas H2 antagonists are reversible and competitive, okay? So if you're forced to choose, let's say they just give you a GERD presentation, you're forced to choose between the H2 blocker and the PPI, you're gonna choose the PPI and they do assess that. Uh, you should also know, and this is really fucking weird, and I've seen this on uh, one of the NBME forms, that the effect of fluconazole, so you can't give azoles with proton pump inhibitors because you need acidity for azoles to be activated within the stomach apparently, and you should also know that you can't give PPIs with sucralfate. Okay, sucralfate can be used to coat ulcers, uh, and you need acidity for uh, adequate sucralfate cross-linking. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, loratity, and wrong answer. H, this is a, a second-generation H1 receptor antagonist. Okay, so cimetidine, H2 receptor antagonist for stomach acid. Loratidine, H1 receptor antagonist, second generation. This is for allergies, okay, and has fewer side effects than first generation. That's a long discussion. I've made prior clips on this in the audio cue bank. We're not going to get tangential. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Misoprostol is the correct answer. This is a prostaglandin E1 analog. USMLE is not going to be gotcha. They're not going to give you dinoprostone, misoprostol. It's the same answer as the way I did. I just decided to be a flagrant asshole. But you need to know that misoprostol notably has efficacy in patients who have NSAID-induced ulcers. I mean, the logic is not difficult to infer. NSAIDs knock out cyclooxygenase, decrease prostaglandin synthesis. Prostaglandin is necessary for um, adequate mucosal barrier within the stomach. So if you just replenish the prostaglandin, misoprostol, then that in theory could be used to treat NSAID-induced ulcers. And it's the answer they want in the USMLA. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.